Hi, welcome to Horror and Coffee. Today we'll be reviewing I Spit on Your Grave, the original. I Spit on Your Grave, the remake. Also, The Human Centipede and Maniac. So stay tuned on this next episode. correct. I hope I said that right. Um, it's basically about the, the whole scenario of, of a couple of the girls. It says 100% medically accurate. Yeah, accurate. Um, where uh, a couple of girls get, you know, their car breaks down. It's the whole class. The same, the car same. breaks down in the middle of the woods. They go to a house. Cell phone weird. doesn't work. As Cell phone know. doesn't work. Creepy guy opens the door. Man, I hope, you know, that weirdness. Which in which case I would have turned around and ran, but that didn't happen to them. They're like, hey, we need to use your phone, right? So they go in. And then before you know it, they get thrust into what they didn't know that they were. This guy was a mad doctor who is had the ability, I and mean, he did this. He did this. He um he connected them and some other poor person, this poor guy, this Japanese dude, to um to each other. They connected to to make create a human centipede, anus to mouth, anus to mouth, mouth to anus, blah 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 blah. It was like. The, and it was so disturbing to see that. It messed me up. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I, I kept on watching this, and I was like, that's some real messed up stuff, man, to, to, for something like that to happen to somebody. You know, that that's a nightmare. That was a nightmare, really, a nightmare come true to these four poor, unfortunate souls that underwent this. And I would see it again. I give it four coffee cups because it actually was That's good, good coffee. but it was disturbing because if they say that it is 100% me medically accurate to do that to people, then you know what? That's some real sick crap because the truth of the matter is it wouldn't work. Even if it was medically accurate to attach, people can't survive like that. They will die within a matter of minutes if not hours. I, I, think, I think the movie definitely... Um I wouldn't much call it sick. I think a lot of people call it sick because of the whole concept of the three ass to mouth, ass to mouth thing. But when you actually see that on the screen, you see the the white wrap aroundings between every every yeah. connection. Yeah. So people are, when they when they when people talk about it, they talk they actually think they're going to see a mouth attached to the ass visually the whole thing. But in between that, you see all this. Um, it's really it's really. But, Aside well, from that, it's well directed, um, mm -hmm. it's disturbing, and it's quite original. This is something that I, like I said, every once in a few years you'll get a movie that's gonna probably be uh, chilling and uh, disturbing. And this one is this they, decade. This they decade definitely film. came up. Yeah. It, well, I don't know about the decade, but yeah, definitely a good film. Well, I I totally I totally recommend this. I give it four coffee cups. That's as good well. coffee. That's, that's good based on that. A lot of people, a lot of people who down this movie are not horror fans. People say this is sick. Is that they're not they're not into horror. We are into horror, we're into all kinds of horror. There's a lot of crappy movies. This one's original. There it is. Okay. Next film. Next film. I've knew I've known about this one. You can I say something? This film I've known about Maniac, right? Ever since I've I've you know I've I've known Victor over here since we were in school together and um I've never to be honest with you I haven't seen this film yet. And you can't be a true horror fan if you haven't seen Maniac. Well, I guess I'll be seeing it today. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to leave this with me tonight. All right, but uh, um, I'll give it a rating. Okay, my rating of this movie, um, there's, I give it two different ratings. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. The first rating of this movie, 
let's put it this way. This movie stars Joe Spinell. This is a guy who was in the Rocky movies. Who is Joe Ralph doesn't know him. Uh, Joe Spinell was in the Rocky movies. He was in The Godfather. He was like one of those supporting characters. Always played a supporting character. Finally, he's playing in a starting role. He's the title character of this movie. And unfortunately, it's a horror movie. Now, the thing about this film is, the script is horrible. This script, anybody could do it. The star, really, of this movie is the special effects. Tom Savini's special effects. And that's one of the reasons why I got it, because this is just classic. I mean, when you walked into a theater at this time in the 80s and saw these realistic special effects, you were blown away. You couldn't see something like this. This movie was banned. So the, the effects of this movie, that's the star of this movie. If Tom Savini didn't do the effects of this film, it would have just been another horror film that would have been in the bargain bin. This movie gets four coffee cups. That's good eight, coffee. And that's the first rating. The second rating, without the special effects, will get one but this movie is a classic in my song. about this? Story? Okay. I spit on your grave, right? Where's Originally it? called Day of the Woman, and I think it should have stayed, that title is more accurate to, uh, the, accurate to the film. I don't know where this I spit on your grave part came from. I got the original one in my hand, and he has... I, this is the remake. The remake of I spit on your grave. Right. Tell, talk about the original. Okay, the original movie, when I first saw this, I saw it on videotape back in 1984, I believe, and I hated it. Mm. I hated the... I thought you liked it. Wait a minute, I'll tell you what. Let me finish. I hated this movie for the fact that there was no music in it. The acting was horrendous. I did like the special effects. The little special effects here and there were most a little bit realistic. But the raping in this movie is just... It just goes on. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And it looks real. It's basically about a woman who goes... Somewhere to do something for her. So I don't know in this version, same, but in this version, thing. it's the same thing. To write a book or something. She's she working on a book. book, and then there's these locals, these group of guys that are local guys from the town that know that she's there, and they decide to have some fun with her, and then they end up putting her through a lot of crap. She ends up turning around and getting her revenge on them at the end. But now, um, seeing this movie again on Blu-ray, I have much more appreciation for it now. Guess what? I like the original. Uh, I don't like it, like, in essence, like, I could watch it a hundred times or whatever, but I saw it again. Yeah, that would be disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you, man? But I like this movie for the fact is, as a filmmaker, since as we're, like, into film, you get to, you get to appreciate more films now better than you did when you was a kid. The, the, the remake, however... I when I when I was when I was first we went to the movies to see it together. at midnight because they the unrated version was the one they were showing they weren't they, even showing the rated right movie. they weren't they they the, the director didn't have it rated because they were right. not so this gonna, wasn't advertised mm -hmm. in the papers there was no TV spots on TV right 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 when you when you make an unrated movie guess what it's not going to be advertised exactly and they're going to show it at midnight so we saw this well, we, we we weren't not expecting anything. Right? We just went in there, uh, uh, we, uh, you know. We knew basically the girl was going to get raped. That we knew for sure. And we knew she was going to get her revenge. But right. the thing that I think bothered me, I liked this movie to, because I saw what they did to her basically became, was brutal and horrific. And I told my wife, I don't think you can watch this. It's very disturbing what they do to her. But... It doesn't pale, in, it pales in comparison to what she does back to them. The sense of justice that is carried out is not only warped and skewed, but it is to the point that I enjoyed so much what she did to them that it scared me. That's what was scary about it. And that's I wouldn't call it a horror film as much as it is a disturbing film because it brought even, it kind of did something to me, it kind of brought inside to me like, wow, you know, I actually feel this way. I, you know... Sh I think that's what the director was looking for. I see, think so, too. What the director was looking for in the original was that after you see this girl get raped so many times, you really want to hate the guys that are doing this. Right. So bad that when she kills them finally, it, she gets, you know, it's justifiable what she does. Mm -hmm. You understand? So basically, in the, sec in the second movie, same thing. However, the rape scene is cut short. Right. Because, obviously, I don't think they want to show the rape scene from part one. And this was made, what, like, decades? In the late 70s. Yeah. 
but um, it's justifiable what she does to them, and that's why they put you through the whole thing of seeing the rape, of seeing how she's being brutalized and everything, and then you get that sense of satisfaction at the end. Yeah, but the sense of satisfaction, it's still disturbing. It's, it bothers me, like, damn, you know? I, I, I mean, I think we all have a sense of justice that needs to be um, kind of carried out, you know? But if you don't have any kind of higher power to throw that on, forget about it. You can really the, go off the, the deep end. The, and that's what this movie kind of like. The killings in this film are, I, I like them. Uh, there's one of them, uh, one of the killings in this film. Very creative. Very creative. One of the killings in this film remind me of Clockwork Orange. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Oh, okay. But it does remind <laughs> me of it. Clockwork and, Orange? Yeah. Does. That have guy seen, got all fine. You seen Clockwork Orange? Yes. That right. guy got all fine. Oh, yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? That was nothing. Compared to what happened to this guy. Okay. Forget about it. All right, but um, aside all right. from that, you know what I like about the original um, On Spill in the Grave? The original has. The best thing about this DVD is that. I could watch it over again, based only because on the commentary by Joe Bob Briggs, who has his commentary throughout the entire film of how he just makes the movie funny. In the right, commentary. listen to the commentary. That's the that's the thing that's worth about getting this DVD, the commentary of Joe Bob Briggs. I'm not a I commentary guy personally, but that's okay. I don't think nobody is. Everybody who buys a Blu-ray or DVD, I don't think they even listen that's to That's good coffee. coffee. So I'm Ralph, and this is Vic, and we'll see you next time for Coffee and Horror. Coffee and Horror, ladies and gentlemen, episode three coming up next week. That's right. Actually I don't know why they do it that way. And when I bought it, it when I bought it, they had this. I put, see the way I did it. I had House of Thousand Corpses and the Devil's Rejects here. I switched it. But this was here and this was there. It pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it really bothered me. It really bothered me because part one is this one. Why would they have people think that this one, you gotta watch this first than this one? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all, people. It doesn't anyway, make any sense at all. That's good coffee.